Welcome to this lecture on analysis. We always talk about fractals in this lecture. I want to present you 10 fractals really quickly. The first one is the famous Cantor set or Cantor Smith set because Smith has found it already a couple of years before Cantor. You start with an interval, you cut away the middle third, you cut away the middle third of the two intervals you have, etc., etc., and you end up with this beautiful fractal of dimension 0 0.63. That's what we call a fractal. A fractal has dimension which is not an integer. <clears throat> the second fractal is very beautiful. It's the Koch snowflake, so you start with a triangle, you add two, you add three triangles on each side, and then you add more triangles here, so you add more, more triangles here, etc., etc., until you reach this beautiful snowflake. It looks a little bit like this. You can produce other fractals like that. It has dimension 1.26, so it's a curve which has, it has infinite length, but the area inside is finite. <coughs> Looks also coastlines have often this type of structure. The Sierpinski carpet is very nice too. It is obtained by taking a square and then cutting, cutting away the middle triangle and then at the middle square. And then you, you, you do that for every of the squares, <clears throat> like with the contour set, but that's kind of a two dimensional version of that. And the dimension is now between <clears throat> one and two. Actually, in this case, yeah, between one and two, so it's not quite two-dimensional. Also, creatures which you see in the sea, like the sea star, if you look close, there are holes, and then there are holes in each of the, of the, of the parts which had no hole before, etc., etc. The Menger sponge is a very beautiful object too. It has dimension between two and three. So what happens is you take a cube and you cut away the, the middle the middle parts, so you tunnel through here, and what you end up is with a cube, which has now 20 little cubes here, and now you do that same thing with each of the cubes here. So the dimension is log 20 over log 20, I think it's log, yeah, log 3, so 2.7 <coughs> is the dimension of this, a little bit below 3. <coughs> so that's the Menger sponge. The Weierstrass function is very nice it has relations with harmonic analysis with uh, real analysis functional analysis so there are some parameters i wrote you down the definition it's a sum of of, of cosine functions and uh, so with the power here with the power here depending on the parameter you can compute since maybe 10 years one can compute the dimension of this uh, of this uh, graph also brownian motion most of the <coughs> paths which you see <coughs> of a particle in the air as this fractal structure. The uh, Lorentz attractor, we talk more about chaos in the next weeks. So what, what we have is a, a, a differential equation. It's defined as a differential equation. And what you see is that the orbits accumulate at, uh, on an object which is fractal, has a fractal shape, and which has dimension numerically between two and uh, three. It's also related with turbulence, related with, and we call this a strange attractor. The DLA, the diffusion limited aggregation. So you start with a point and then you add particles. I don't have, I cannot simulate that here. Maybe I have a simulation, a computer simulation, Paul Burke, which I will show you. start with a with a seed and you let particles accumulate there so that also happens in this crystal growth thing so I actually have here a crystal growth kit this this is salt and this will aggregate and produce crystals which have then supposedly this shape which you see which you see here <clears throat> also uh, here kind of if you look at this lightning then uh, lightning uh, also this has uh, the, the, the curves are often very complicated in this case actually not so much so that was the diffusion limited aggregation the Barnsley fern is kind of an iconic picture about uh, fractals I have here brought some 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 broccoli if you look at this broccoli it has kind of a self-similar structure so I already broke off one part here this part looks really like the, the, the original <coughs> broccoli 
and then I can take even here I can take one part away and again I have a piece which looks like the the original broccoli. So what happens is on every scale essentially I have the same uh, same structure. Also plants, if you look at plants, I just brought some plants here or this tree or else these are called uh, L systems. <coughs> also you can construct them recursively and this bouncy fern also is constructed with a with as an attractor of an iterated function system. So this is very very beautiful uh, river systems often have this uh, this structure. Uh, if you look at uh, there are whole books, picture books. This is from an artist who, uh, a photographer who's called the Anai for fractals, and you see that uh, plants have really this uh, this uh, fractal structure. We cannot talk about fractals without talking about the Mandelbrot set, which is a set with, uh, which actually doesn't technically be uh, isn't technically a fractal. It is. Its dimension is two. Shishikura has proven that uh, a couple of decades ago, and uh, but it's beautiful. And here I have a book from uh, one of the early books I bought, so in the 80s, about this. And they they already in the 80s have uh, have produced stunning pictures of this Mandelbrot set. And nowadays, of course, it's everywhere, and you can generate them very quickly yourself on a on a computer. There, 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 there are lots and lots of programs which do that for you. And finally, I want to talk about the real YouTube star in uh, uh, fractal theory, which is the Mandel bulb. So it looks a little bit like this, this guy, this fellow here, but it's a very beautiful object. So it, it, is, a, it is defined like the Mandel broad set is defined, but instead of squaring the complex uh, numbers, you square the, the spherical coordinates or in this case you take the 8 power to make this uh, beautiful object and I will show you also some animations which people have done for this fractal. It's almost a mist. it's a mystery, it's also art, computer graphics art and uh, what also happens is because it is nothing is known, there is no theorem. For example there is nothing known about the connectivity here. Here uh, Duarte and Hubbard have in the 80s shown that the, the Mandelbrot set is connected so it, even so it looks as if these dendrites are kind of going off and they are islands but they are this is connected and one doesn't know seem to know anything about this so for example is it connected uh, or what is its dimension we have no idea what its its dimension is also here uh, this was this was difficult but one had complex analysis as a tool and that's it for today uh, see you Monday in class Thank uh...